Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to install some speakers to give our Boxster a little audio refresh. We've got this delivery from Crutchfield. So let's take a look at what we're gonna put in. I got some uh, four inch kickers to go on the dash. I have a new amp to replace the factory amp that uh, mine has, an Alpine there. And then we have some Focal speakers for the doors and wiring harness for the amp and what else here we got uh, the rca connectors to connect the amp to the head unit and as you've probably seen in my other videos i already replaced the head unit the factory one with this doubled in guy right here from pioneer so we're gonna start up here on the top and there are two T15, I believe, uh, screws that we're going to take out to get this speaker out. Yeah, I should have known better. T15 didn't sound right. They're T20s. I just read that uh, from somebody else. All right, well, that didn't take long. So I didn't have a T20 that was shallow enough to fit between the window glass and the actual screw. So just uh, pick some of these up at Lowe's. Now I can fit this in here, undo these. It's a long screw that comes out of there. All right, with the screws removed, I should be able to just lift this up. That corner's tucked in there with that tab, it looks like. And I'll undo this connector here. All right, this connector just has a little tab right here. That you press down and pull it out. Not sure what they wrapped that wire with, but uh, it's pretty disgusting. All right, here's our kicker speaker with this obviously not needed. So we're gonna have to remove this one and replace with this guy here. Our stock speaker has one, two, and then a third little Phillips screw, so we're gonna remove this. All right, after unscrewing these, this is a long one in the back and two short ones in the front. Now this will just open right up. And we can see our old speaker that's all nasty and deterior deteriorating. Uh, and it's got a little tweeter here, it looks like, but our new one has the tweeter built in. So we'll just uh, cut these wires that are connected to that. And we're gonna cut this speaker out and reuse our little attachment device. these remove this all together okay the first thing we're gonna try to do is to reuse this mount for our speaker over here um, this speaker seems to be a little smaller in diameter so I'm not positive that this is gonna work but we're gonna try it by uh, cutting off all of these tabs around here leaving this terminal on, um, but just snipping all of these off to save the cone on the bottom so that we can use the same screw holes to mount this back on. So literally just start by snapping all these off. Okay, you can see where I snipped all of these off, except for this connector here. So I'm going to it's not easy to get a, the tin snips in here, so I'll probably just use a Dremel and uh, cut this part off of the connector. Now, of course, it's not a requirement to use this connector. You can just cut the pigtail off of the wires that are coming up through the dash and uh, connect them directly right here, which is fine, but I'm gonna try to keep my uh, 
connector on there just to make it as OEM as possible. Also, before dremeling, you can see that uh, copper colored wire that is coming off of this terminal going to the speaker. I'm just gonna snip that off as well on both sides. All right, you can use whatever bit that you find useful. I just find this one easy when cutting through here. So I'm just gonna cut this part off essentially. Oh, and uh, yeah, this thing is magnetic, so it's grabbing the tip. So. Okay, that was an ugly job, but uh, it's off now. All right, it's gonna be really close with this new one. It is uh, not a lot of tolerance for this to be hitting it because we're gonna have to cut these tabs off. And when we do, the speaker is uh, smaller than our original, so I just want to make sure that the lip of the speaker is still going to catch the lip of this to hold it in place. So when I cut these tabs off, I'm going to try to leave a little bit hanging out so it will catch. So it's really easy to cut these off with these uh, same tin snips, and I just cut to the outside of those dots. Okay, that's actually a really good fit now. The tabs I cut just right, so they're actually pressing against the outside a little bit. So it's uh, holding it on just with force. I can pull them off. So the next thing I'm going to do is clean up the foam from the old speakers on here. So it's a uh, better plastic surface. And then I'm going to take uh, something to press in here to actually uh, mount it and attach the speaker. Okay, back to the Dremel. I'm just taking this wire brush and going over the edge. You can see it's lifting up the gunk really easily. Okay, so when test fitting these two pieces together, you can see that there's a gap right here in the center of the screen. Um, and that is because the lip is hitting those tabs that are a little longer. So I think I'm gonna have to snip the tabs off. Uh, I'm going to try half of them off first and then I'm going to cut them all off. All right, I just went ahead and cut the tabs all the way off and now you can see that it is able to be flush again. Uh, the other thing I noticed when setting this speaker up is that the a uh, piece that I left on here to clip into the factory um, hits the actual speaker in some orientations. So I had to rotate it around until one of these little uh, gaps in the speaker lined up with this. Okay, to attach the speaker to that little ring, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of this Sugru stuff, but it is super cool. I've used it before to mount a GoPro to the front of my helmet for my motorcycle, and it holds it on a rock solid. So we're going to take some of this stuff and use it. It comes in these cool little packets. You just take it out and uh, squish it around like Play-Doh to activate it. Then we're going to just... Uh, Get it like a snake, wrap it around the back of the speaker and press them together. Okay, this should take you back to kindergarten here. Just uh, roll this into a little snake and then we're gonna wrap it around the back edge of our speaker. On the surface, is the surface that is going to mate This is a one whole pack of this that I used. So after it's on there, just take our plate and remember the orientation that you want. Line this up in the middle. 
just press it on. It's going to get solid and it's going to be a great surface. Another cool thing about this is it's not messy. So you can uh, go ahead and test fit again, make sure your seam is still lined up. Um, but the weight of this speaker just pushed it back through. So let me line it up again. Be smarter about that this time. The only negative about this stuff is it does have to set for 24 hours before it's permanently cured, but then it's like a strong silicone rubber. There. All right, so I just opened the package uh, of the other speaker and I see that it comes with two wires, which is handy. So I'm gonna use these to make the connections. And as you can see, one has a bigger terminal, one has a smaller terminal. The bigger terminal has a red mark on here. So that is our positive. The smaller one is our negative. And uh, of the wires that we cut off of the terminal from the speaker, the Black and green is our negative, and that happened to be on the right side as you were looking at it. Um, I remembered when I was cutting them off, so you can see a little bit of the red and green. Um, and this wire actually switched over to the other side, so I'll show you later. But as you're looking at the terminal, the one on the right opposite this one, would have been our negative and our positive was the black wire on the other side so we will take this wire put these connections on the new speaker and solder these into the corresponding terminals of our old one so while this one is setting up with the sugru drying i'm going to go ahead and start on the other speaker and get it out mounted like this set up and just let them uh, sit overnight all right, this is our left speaker, our driver's side speaker for this car. So I just want to make sure I record uh, the polarity of these so I can get it right when connecting to the new one. All right, I don't know why I didn't seem to have this problem with the first one, but these tabs here were interfering hitting with the speaker on this one, so I just went ahead and sn uh, snipped them all off from the bottom instead of from the top, so they're out of the way completely. Okay, next day. This is on tight now. Shake it around, it's not going anywhere. Now the next step is soldering these wires. All right, so this is our passenger side speaker again, the first one we started with yesterday. So these connections only fit one way and we're going to cut this wire and trim it off and make it shorter because they only need to go right here. And the one on the left here is where the black wire was. So that's our positive. So this thick connector is going to go all the way across to the left. And the other is our negative and all that gunk is still on here, so I'm gonna take my uh, soldering gun over here, heat it up, and just press it against here to melt off some of this old solder and make a new connection. Okay, first I just wanna cut this a little shorter. We can pull them apart. Just want to strip this down. To get some bare wire, twist it together. Do the same thing on the other side.
Okay, now the positive is this one, so I'm following it around. So the positive is this one. So when I melted some of this other stuff off earlier, you can see it's still melted on here, but when it was hot, there is an actual hole right here. So once I heat it up again at an angle so that stuff doesn't fall into your speaker. Okay, I melted some of that other gunk off there and you can see at the bottom is kind of a V in there that I'm going to stick the wire and just solder it right there. There we go, that's one soldered on. Just kind of burn the extra old wires and gunk off of this one. Just heat it up and the old solder and wire will come out. So you can see this old wire I clipped going into that hole. All right, we're soldered up, ready to go. Now we just close these back up and put our three screws back in from underneath. Somewhere along the line this clip has most certainly fallen off for you. Uh, where it goes is right here. It slides over this and as you can see it's got a little place for the nail to bite. So when you put this Sorry, the screw. So when you put this screw back in, it will not screw in if you don't have this plate here. Okay, on the driver's side, it was the other way around. The negative green was on the left. So that one's going to the left, positive on the right. Positive. Now we can plug our cable back in and put our speaker back. Well, crap, the Sugru really let me down this time. It did get hard and get rubbery, but it did not stick and they fell apart. So I'm gonna try some silicone. Just put some on the back around the speaker and then set it down into the mount and gonna let that dry for a little bit. This one, holding it by the edges to keep some pressure on it. And then after it dries for a bit, I'll flip it over and maybe fill it in on the back a little bit more to make sure there's more contact. So the silicone is a lot messier, but it seems to hold stronger and it dries a heck of a lot faster. In about 30 minutes, uh, it should be strong enough to mess with. So on the back, just to give it a little more surface contact, Okay, now we should just be able to reconnect the cable and set it back in place. I just replace the screws. All right, now before I replace those screws, I did turn it on and make sure that it worked, make sure that connection is good. All right, I hope you guys found this useful. I have the amp install I'm just finishing up. The video will be coming out soon to tie all of these pieces together. 
please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're finding this helpful.